All right, so let me move on now to treatment options for type 2 diabetes. We have newer anti-diabetic medicines. I'm not going to cover them all, but let's first look at uh, trials related to SGLT2 inhibitors. Maybe, Chris, if you can just kind of tell us what that class is and, and talk about some of the outcomes trials. You don't have to go into all the details, but give us a broad view. Well, this has been such an exciting time, uh, and the first of these trials was the EMPA-REG trial with empagliflozin, an SGLT2 inhibitor. It inhibits the exchanger so that glucose goes out in the urine, but changes probably pressure in the glomeruli in the kidney. Uh, you get weight loss and lots of other beneficial factors uh, with the, the entire class, and so out of surprise, there was a significant reduction in cardiovascular events and indeed cardiovascular mortality. So this caught everyone's attention and really has ushered in a new era in our thinking about how to manage cardiovascular risk in, in patients with diabetes. And it's been exciting to see, uh, you know, other trials show very similar effects. And so the CANVAS trial followed with canagliflozin, a little bit less dramatic on mortality, but same idea. And probably it's data falling in the confidence intervals of truth uh, there. And then most recently with dapagliflozin. Um, interesting thing emerged there that the benefits on cardiovascular death, MI, and, and stroke seem to segregate in people who have known atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and, and a little bit less dramatic in, in primary prevention patients with diabetes. However, you started out pointing out the heart failure risk came onto the scene because this was a, a bit of a surprise to all of us, but you know, benefit and a huge benefit, like a third reduction in hospitalization for heart failure. And this has been uniform in all the patients studied with SGLT2 inhibitors. And so another axis of benefit. Um, then a final thing that's emerged in all of these trials was a benefit on pre preservation of renal function. So they weren't focused, but they collected all the key data and, and less doubling of creatinine and, and uh, trends on all the other endpoints. And it was announced the first of the dedicated renal trials, Credence, will be presented in mid-April, uh, announced to be positive already. So that's a third axis of benefit on outcomes. So, so we have uh, adverse cardiac events, heart attack, stroke, cardiovascular death, heart failure and renal benefit with this class of drugs. And so a broad range of effects. Just um, amazing and, and, uh, and very clinically important things in this high risk population. Well, Peter, let's try to tease out some of these benefits. Uh, three point MACE, what is that? And is heart failure a component of that? Because I just heard Chris say cardiovascular events and then he switched and he said heart failures. Three point MACE Heart failure, is it different or what? Right, so MACE is major adverse ca cardiovascular events. And in 2008, the FDA guidance for the uh, manufacturers was to study MACE, which was non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke, and cardiovascular death, as a safety composite. Okay. And that's what was done in these trials. These trials are set up to be non, the drug was set up to be non-inferior to placebo on three-point MACE. Now, fortunately, heart failure was an adjudicated other safety endpoint not included in three-point So that was not part of the three-point But it was adjudicated okay. in these trials, and uh, I played a role in that uh, to make that become a reality. And, and as Chris pointed out, the big effect is on heart failure, and so the cardiovascular signal, the belief is, is really mediated through heart failure and not mediated through stroke or MI. Unlike a statin, for instance, where the cardiovascular death benefit is mediated through the non-fatal ischemic events, in this case with SGLT2s, it's through this myocardial and, and renal effect. Melissa, do you think it's worthwhile for patients to be aware of these outcome data, or should we just stick with the numbers and let them know about their hemoglobin A1C, their blood pressure, their lipids. Do you ever discuss outcomes data? I do, and I, I think the more you can arm and knowledge the patient with that data, the more buy-in, the more acceptance you're gonna get. Um, and I think, you know, doing the, the team approach with the patient being the center of that team and, and that shared decision-making is very important for adherence. And just explaining why we're choosing the agents we're choosing and the, and the pathways we're choosing um, really lends a lot to, to adherence and to people accepting more treatment.